Hello everyone, I'm, this is the latest of my Inside the House of Lords, which I usually film outside the House of Lords, but you might notice I'm nowhere near the House of Lords. I'm actually here in Bermondsey at the Academy of Ideas office, but in fact today was the last day of the House of Lords meeting before Christmas. Um, I, I just wanted to do a little recap, because there's a few things to note, because actually today wasn't meant to be the last day, and this gives us an insight as to what's going on in Parliament, so I'd share it with you which is that we were due to be sitting as the House of Lords on Monday and Tuesday. I was quite excited because I had my first ever question that I could ask a minister and I was going to ask it about the road closures around Hackney and Islington and the way that COVID has been used as a cover to really push an anti-car agenda. And I wanted to do a shout out, so I'll do it now, to Niall Crowley and various of the campaigners who've been going on demonstrations about the absolute imposition of an agenda behind the COVID cover that basically disrupts everyone's lives. You just can't drive around there anymore because some people don't like cars and they say they're doing it because of COVID. Anyway, I wanted to ask that question on Monday and I'm thwarted. Why? Because we've been sent home early. Now, this is significant because those of us who are following the Brexit negotiations will know that we thought that maybe we would get a chance to debate them. We're getting close to the, the hour um, some of us have hoped that because the EU had been so intransigent that would just be, we would leave on WTO terms, just walk away. But it's very obvious the government are desperate to get a deal. And so what we're going to be left with is a very rushed parliamentary uh, Commons and House of Lords debate on a thousands of words document, you know, hundreds of pages that will either be, which will probably be between Christmas and New Year. I just don't think they're going to get us back on Monday and Tuesday because they've effectively told all the staff at the House of Lords to go home. And why would they do that? And they might as well have kept again. So I think it's going to be between Christmas and New Year and it's history being made. So I'll definitely be there. But how depressing that they're going to push it through. It won't be accountable. And I'm just furious and annoyed. But anyway, I'll come back for that. Um, I wanted to just uh, uh, do one story. I mean, there's been lots of things. I've been, uh, you know, it's been quite nice going around, a bit Christmassy. I bought a house of Christmas cake for their charity. Um, and um, people are sort of like looking forward to having a few days off. But there was a, a really interesting debate that happened that's worth sharing with you, which I wandered into accidentally. And it was an emergency regret motion by a, a, a hereditary peer arguing that it was wrong that the um, procedures committee had basically postponed into uh, eternity almost um, the by-elections for hereditary peers. It was the most obscure who cared discussion. But actually the hereditary peer who argued that this should not be postponed into the future made the point that it was a law and that in fact that the, these by-elections should happen and you might think well you know hereditary is this is okay and he cares what are they having elections for but he made the point that that was part of the reform and and that this was being used to push um a, a kind of different agenda and true to form i was just sitting listening and then all of these opposition people stood up labor lib dems in particular and ranted about the problems of hereditary peers, how they hoped they'd never be a by-election anymore. Yes, it was COVID, but they hoped that even if COVID wasn't there, there wouldn't be a by-election. In other words, they were doing exactly what I've just said about the roads, which they're using COVID to push their own political agenda, but in an anti-democratic way. So uh, to my surprise, it was also one of those debates where I could just email in and say, I want to speak. So I ended up speaking, defending the hereditary peers, which was odd. But the bit I really enjoyed was reminding the sanctimonious anti-hereditary peers in the House of Lords that they weren't elected either, that none of us are. That in fact, the whole thing is an anti-democratic against you. For them to start getting on their high horse and that they were being even more anti-democratic than the hereditary peers concerned because they're trying to cancel an election, any election. So that was a bit of fun. I've actually spoken so much that I can't even remember. And I've been putting the uh, videos up. So I think I've got in my stride. I think we've all realised that I now know how to put my hand, or you know, to put my name down and get to speak in the House of Lords. But reflecting back on what it means, I think I can safely say that if this is what politics amounts to, it's a very bad state of affairs. I, however, do not think politics is Parliament. 
and have never really aspired to be there. And why I'm in the Academy of Ideas is because I think that politics is a whole different ball game. Um, I'm going to wish you a happy Christmas and we all know that Covid restrictions means that it's difficult deciding what to do. I was at least pleased that Boris Johnson did give some leeway, some knowledge, acknowledgement to uh, sovereign, sovereignty, to self-determination um, in individual lives by saying, well, you know, you've got these five days, you can sort of decide what you do with them, even though we advise you to have a very little Christmas, as you said. Um, but in the end, he gave judgment, and that's very important, because one of the things that I've noticed is just that all of this COVID mania in a way coming from government is all about undermining us as adults making decisions. So, Academy of Ideas, why I'm in the office is because we've got this exciting thing. This is my Christmas present to you. These are our new initiative at the Academy of Ideas, Letters on Liberty. And they're short essays in the form of pamphlets, beautifully designed, I think, by uh, Jan Bayman. Shout out to Ella Wheeler for pulling the whole project together and to uh, Martin Perks, we're doing a lot of the online design and then uh, Rob Lyons, of course, our, our, our web uh, master. But the main thing is the content of these written by uh, Alka uh, Sager uh, Cuthbert, uh, Jacob uh, Reynolds and Frank Brady on different uh, um, issues on race, on the culture wars and beyond um, and on democracy and freedom, freedom uh, with no illusions. So, you know, really important. And you know, what have we done these for? Right. This is the big inspiration. You know, as I've sat with this Brexit stuff, it's really dawned on me. I am in the House of Lords and I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm consigned to being an observer. Historically, pamphleteers emerged in the 17th, 18th century when the public started to come onto the stage and started to want to know what was going on to be part of the discussions about the future of society. And they wrote pamphlets and then they distributed them and they literally went round and handed them from hand to hand in pubs in coffee houses they said read this and i'll come back and talk to you tomorrow and that was the emergence of the working class of the public sphere of the what we now know to be universal franchise eventually where people suddenly said i'm not just doing passively watching i want to be part of this discussion and pamphlets were their way of doing it in the 2020s we shouldn't need pamphleteering but we do because the public has been squeezed to the sidelines so grab, argue, grab some of these, use them to argue, take some of the, them to the pubs when they're open and tell people to read them and come back and argue with them. Use the new arguments that we're trying to develop around freedom. And there'll be many, many more of these in 2021 to kickstart a new freedom movement. We absolutely need it. For now, they're just great stocking fillers. And so have a very happy Christmas. I will report back when I get called back to do the Brexit in the Lords stuff, but for now, I'm actually glad not to be in the Lords for a while, um, but I'm, I'm glad to be a, a bit accountable to you, at least by these films.